Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve binary tree in order traversal. And this is actually a pretty trivial problem if you've uh, you know done anything with trees before, especially if we uh, do the recursive solution, which we will. But we're going to take that recursive solution and also figure out how we can make an iterative solution uh, doing that. Now, even though the code of the iterative solution is going to be completely different from the recursive one, the concepts are actually the same. Like what's going on under the hood is pretty much exactly the same. So that's what we're going to use to actually figure out this more difficult solution. So simple enough, we're given the root of a binary tree and we want to return the in order traversal of the values of all of its nodes. So in this case, uh, for this tree, this is the root. We're going to do an in order traversal. How do we do that? Well, we start at the root. We don't actually process the value just yet. First, we want to do the entire left subtree, but it doesn't have a left subtree, so we don't have to do anything. Uh, next, we take the value one itself and add it to the result. So here we have a result and one is added to it. Now we don't have to visit this node again, but now we're gonna run the exact same algorithm recursively in order traversal on this right subtree. So we pretty much do what we did before. Before we visit this node itself, we have to go through its entire left subtree, which is pretty small in this case, it's just a single node. This is kind of the base case because now we have to go to the left subtree of this node, but it doesn't actually have a left subtree, nothing is there. So then we can process the value, three. We can add three to our result, and then we're done with this node. Then we would go to the right subtree, but it doesn't even have a right subtree. So now we're done. We go back up to our parent node. And now from this node's perspective, since we just went through the entire left subtree, now it's time to process this node. The value is two. We add that to our result. And then we would go to the right subtree, but it doesn't have one. So we're pretty much done in this case. That's the entire result. One, three, two. You can see it's the same as what they expected. Overall time complexity of this algorithm doing it recursively is big O of n because we do have to visit every single node in the tree. The memory complexity in the worst case is also big O of n because of the function call stack because if we do implement it recursively we have to put the parent nodes on the stack before we can actually pop back up to them. We'll actually go in more detail on to like what the stack is when we actually do the iterative solution. Uh, but now let's really quickly just write up the, the code for the recursive solution. Okay, so just coding up the recursive solution real quick. We are gonna create a nested function actually because as we go through the function, we want to be building our results. So I'm gonna call the nested function just something simple like in order. Uh, it's going to take in, it's gonna take in some node just like this function is. Uh, but this variable result out there is also going to be accessible from within this function because this function is defined inside of the outer function. So this is kind of like a global variable for the purposes of this function. Uh, it'll just make things a little bit easier. But for the actual in order traversal, we know it's a recursive algorithm. Recursive algorithms have two parts, the base case, which in this case is pretty simple. If a uh, root is a, a null, right? Not root. So if the root doesn't exist, then we can just return. We're not going to need to do anything. Uh, but if the root is not null, that's when we do the in order traversal. And we know in order traversal is pretty simple. First, we go through the left subtree, whether it exists or not. We can pass in the left subtree by taking root.left into the in order function. And then once that's done, it's time to process the root node itself. Uh, by doing that, uh, we're just saying result, uh, we're going to append the value of the root node to the result. It's just that simple. Uh, and after we do that, the last thing we have to do is pretty much uh, do the exact same recursive algorithm on our right subtree. So, uh, whoops, uh, let's copy and paste that and just change uh, root.left uh, to root.right. So I'm going to leave it at that. So we created our in order traversal. It's very simple. We have a global variable, which is, you know, the thing that's being updated from this function. So let's make sure to call our in order traversal, passing in the root node that was passed into the outer function. Once that's called, our result should be updated. So then we can go ahead and just return our result. And that's the entire recursive algorithm. So I ran the code and it does work. So now let's get into the more difficult solution. Okay, so now let's actually get into to the iterative solution. And we're actually gonna look at a different example to get a better picture of what's going on under the hood. And so this is gonna be our function call stack, but I'm definitely gonna simplify it a lot because in a real a call stack, a bunch of things are pushed onto the stack, like uh, you know the function, 
a bunch of variables, the local variables, the line that we were at executing the code and things like that. Uh, because you know when you call a function from inside a function, it has to remember uh, to get back to the original function. That's what the stack is for. So if we called uh, the function once, then we called the function twice, and then uh, let's say they're the exact same function. After we finished the second call, then we have to go back to the first call. That's how recursion works. But I'm gonna oversimplify it a lot. Uh, and I'm actually just gonna use the node values on our stack just to kind of simplify things. But so this is how it would work in a regular recursive uh, in order traversal for this. First, we take this node. We don't want to add this to our result just yet. We want to push this to our stack for the time being. So we're going to put one on the stack. That's uh, the node one that we're talking about. And, and we want to now traverse the left tree before we traverse this node, but we're putting it on our stack to remember that we do have to do this eventually. So next we go to node two. We're not gonna process this node either. We're gonna push this onto our stack. So node two is also on our stack. Our result is still empty. Then we go to node three uh, because we're going to the left subtree of two. Now three is also gonna be pushed to the stack. Uh, and then we're gonna go visit the left subtree of three. It doesn't have anything though. So now is the part where we would pop from our stack. So we're gonna pop three and add it to our result. So let's also cross it out here. Recursively, this would have been a function call and we would see, okay, this is null. So then we'd pop back up to our parent three. Now that we've popped up to three, we're going to check if it has any right children, because as you're noticing now, even recursively, what this does is go, we go left, we go left, we go left until we can't go left anymore. Then we pop back up to our parent and then we go right and see if anything's there. At this point, nothing is in the right subtree. So we don't do anything here either, but we are going to now pop again from our stack. Because what we're saying is we did this entire subtree and now we can finally go up and process two. So we pop from the stack again, two is added to the result. We can cross two out over here again. And now similarly, when, whenever we pop up to a node, we want to then check its right child if it has any. Right now we do. So now we're gonna run in order traversal on this four. Notice how though, when we do go right, we don't put anything on our stack because once we're done with this subtree uh, over here, we're gonna pop one from our call stack because as you can see in the picture, we've processed everything except one. So uh, now we're gonna go to this four node and four would basically be pushed to the call stack uh, and then we'd go left, nothing is left. So that means we can actually pop four from the call stack as well, put it onto the result cross this out. We would check if there's anything on the right side. Of course there isn't. So then we can go back up uh, and pop again from our call stack. Now we're going to pop one from the call stack. So we're back up here. We can cross this out, add one to our result. And then we would go to the right subtree of one, which is five. Now in reality, we would put five on our call stack, check left, nothing is left. So then we'd pop five from the call stack, add it to the result. And then we would try to go right from five. It doesn't have uh, any right children. So we're pretty much done at that point because our stack is empty and we don't have any current node. So that was basically a simulation of what's actually happening under the hood with a stack. And you can also kind of see why the stack in the worst case is going to be big O of N uh, memory because in the worst case we could have everything pushed onto the stack all at once. What an example tree for that would look like is basically if the tree just happened to be like a linked list. Maybe it only had left children, right? Something like, right, if a tree looked like this, then we would end up having to put all values on the call stack. Okay, but what you might not realize is the simulation that we just did is exactly how the iterative solution works as well, except, but instead of having the function call stack take care of things for us, we're actually going to manually update our stack uh, and do things iteratively. It's basically gonna be the exact same. I'll do a very quick simulation just to give you an idea. So instead of doing this recursively, we're gonna have a pointer. So right now our current pointer is gonna be at one. And what the algorithm at this point is gonna do is we're gonna keep going left until we can't go left anymore. So what we're gonna say right now is, that, okay, this node is non-null. Let's put it on the stack. So the node one is gonna be added to the stack. Now our pointer is gonna go left. This is also not null. So let's add this to the stack. Two is added to the stack. Now we get to three. Three is also not null. Let's add it to the stack. And then we go to the left child of three, which is null. It doesn't exist. So at that point, we pop from the stack. 
we pop three, we add three to the result, and uh, you know, let's just cross it out in the picture. We would try to go to the right child of three, but again, we see it's null, so then we pop from the stack again. So now we get to two, we can cross it out, we can add it to the result. We try to go to the right child right after we pop a node, we go to its right child. So four, in this case, does exist, okay? It's not, so that's where our pointer right now would be, by the way, our current pointer would be here. Since it's not null, we add it to this stack, and then we try to go left, it doesn't have any left ch uh, child. Again, we pop from the stack four and then add it to the result. Let's cross it out here as well. We, and every time after we pop a node, we try to check its right child and then run the same algorithm there. It doesn't have a right child though. So now once again, we pop from our stack. We pop one, add it to the result. Now our current pointer is up here at this one. So let's cross it out and then try to go to the right child down over here, which does exist. So now we would take this value five and add it to the stack. Let's just add it here because we're out of room. Uh, and then we try to go to its left child. It doesn't have one. So then again, we pop from the stack, pop five, add it to the result, uh, and then cross it out here. Now our current pointer would try to go right, but there's nothing there. It's null. So at that point, we know we're done because our current pointer is at null. It's not pointing at anything and our stack is empty because we would try to pop from our stack now, but there's nothing there. So at that point, you know, we have no nodes left. We visited everything. We built our result and we can return it. So conceptually, this is very similar to the recursive solution. The code is going to look a bit different though, but you can kind of get an idea of it's going to be some while loops going left and stuff like that. Okay, so now let's code it up. Okay, so this is the recursive solution. I guess I'll just leave it here if you want to take a look at it. The only thing we're going to need from here is the result. Uh, we're also going to need a stack. So let's get an empty list for our stack. And our current pointer is initially going to be pointing at the root. We want to continue this algorithm, the iterative uh, in order traversal, while our current uh, pointer is non-null and our stack is non-empty. So b basically, if either of these are non-empty, so if our if our current pointer is pointing at a real node or our stack is non-empty, we're going to continue this algorithm. What we want to do is just go left as long as we can. So if our current node is not null, we're going to add it to the stack. So stack dot append the current node and then uh, move our current pointer down to the left. And we're gonna keep doing this as long as it's possible. Once this loop exits, that must mean current is pointing at null. So what we should do now is pop from the stack, so stack.pop, and our current pointer should now be pointing at this node that we just popped. Let's append this to our result just like we did in the drawing. And remember, whenever we pop a node, we append it to the result and then we shift to the right. So we're now uh, our current pointer is going to be shifted to the right node. And what do we do to the right node after we've shifted there? Well, we just run our regular in order traversal. So what should I write here for the code to simulate a regular in order traversal? Well, didn't we just do that right now? Isn't this whole thing a in order traversal. So what would happen if we didn't put anything here? Well, we're gonna go back up to the loop. We're gonna see that our current pointer is non-null or at least our stack should be non-empty. And if that is the case, then we're gonna get uh, back into this loop, right? For that node that we just shifted down to the right, we're gonna try going left as far as we can, which makes sense because that's what we do with any node. But if that node is null, then this loop is not even gonna execute. So then we would end up just popping again from our stack and then appending that to the result and then doing it all over again. So as you can see, even though this code looks a lot different from this one, they are doing the exact same thing with a stack. Maybe I made it look easy, but this code is pretty tricky to come up with on your first time if you've never done an in-order uh, iterative solution before. But that is the entire code, so now let's return the result and run the code to make sure that it works. Oops, I was stupid again. Uh, we're not appending the current node itself to the result, we're appending the value. So uh, I always make that mistake, but now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.